Hi, everyone. Um, so I am Paul. I'm one of the founders of a company called Augd. Uh, I'm going to be demonstrating today examples around how you can augment retail packages. Um, I was going to do some live demos on stage, but I do have a booth just over there, and I can demonstrate all those at the end of the presentation. Uh, so just a, a brief introduction about who we are. Uh, we fly behind the scenes of many different activations. We've been around for about nine years now. Uh, back then, we were one of three companies that specialised in augmented reality. Uh, now there's a slew of them. Uh, where we differ from other people in this space is that we're more technology providers now. We've built a cloud-based content management solution um, to deliver augmented reality experiences, and many experiences can take as as little as a minute to create in our system. Um, so I'm going to demonstrate a few uh, examples of work that we've done shortly, um, but I did want to just get a raise of hands, like how many people know what augmented reality is? Wow, that's huge. That's a lot more than I was expecting. Uh, for those of you in the room that don't know, it's kind of the opposite end of the spectrum to VR. So VR is at I guess this end over here, and augmented reality is uh, when you take digital content and put it into the real world, rather than put yourself into a digital environment. So what's a good demonstration of that? Um, we did this work with Hyundai, uh, and the brief was, um, you know, how do we equip their sales staff with the means to allow them to configure cars and to also explain the safety features of their vehicles, you know, in, a, in an intuitive way. So the nice thing about um, this application that we built was that using a tablet device, uh, their sales staff around Australia could pull that out and when they're talking to the consumer, point that towards the car and we can augment off the physical car. Um, so on the bottom left, you can see you know, augmented reality in action. We can create this digital layer. Uh, in that regard, it's an X-ray view. So it gives people a much better understanding about how the car is built. Um, now, obviously, how does this translate to agricultural operations? Um, you know, I could point that towards, you know, my watershed. I could point that towards a tractor, and I can augment and get information from that. So it's this contextual layer that we can place over things. So what I'll do is I'm going to play a video that demonstrates these experiences in action. So you can see that if you just have one vehicle, you can change its color. Uh, you can change the, the wheel rims. You can get interior views and look around the car and see various options there. At any time, tap on a hotspot to get more information. Uh, notice here the physical car is not actually turning, but augmented view, we can make it look like the car is actually moving. So we can put it in the context of an environment that you couldn't do in that, sh that showroom uh, to show its safety features and, and obviously explain those concepts better. Uh, this is object recognition, where you can point towards the car engine, and it recognises what it's looking at, and it creates this digital layer where you can interact with those things. And there's the x-ray view. So, what else have we done? Uh, we've done some work with Kellogg's. So, um, this very much around uh, retail packaging. So, the concept here is that can we create interactive experiences or games from a cereal pack? Uh, so on the pack itself, it is suggesting what you need to do. Uh, and then when you get into the camera view, you can point that towards the back of the pack and we can create playful things like 3D digital dinosaurs popping out of the pack or uh, penguins and, um, you know, and clicking on those hotspots to learn more. Uh, we also enabled a quiz option where you can go in there and interact and see how much you've learnt as a part of that process. Uh, there's also a camera button there as well, so at any time you can take a photo and then socially share that experience. This is not our work, but I wanted to show just other examples around the world. Um, this one here was launched fairly recently by Lego. Um, you can see here another demonstration of object recognition, but of their physical Lego sets that they build. So the nice thing here is that you can increase that engagement um, and you can make it playful, you can make it fun. Um, and obviously your end consumer is going to interact and you know, be a part of your brand for a lot longer. Um, so in this regard, you can unlock rewards and you can go and catch items, play games. Uh, one experience that we created a very long time ago was for Paramount Pictures where we had a movie poster and we brought that to life and Optimus Prime came out of it. Um, two and a half million downloads in a couple of weeks, which was excellent. 
Uh, but the nice thing about it is, in terms of engagement times, uh, our client was only expecting maybe a minute or two. Um, the average engagement, because we had analytics threaded into the experience, was 10 minutes. Uh, we had some people around the world play for as long as an hour uh, in that experience. So what can be a trigger? I've uh, shown examples of a car. Um, Lego can be a trigger as well. So those are examples of object recognition. Um, other things that can be triggers are you know, flat images, uh, which is probably the, the core of augmented reality. Most people think of a QR code when they think of augmented reality. Um, but we can augment posters you know, in a retail environment. We can augment the packaging as well. Um, I've also included a couple of screen grabs of what the actual camera sees. So the camera is seen in grayscale, and it's looking for a collection of points. And that collection of points acts like a, a digital fingerprint. So anytime it sees that image, you can then add information to it. So the nice thing about it is that augmented reality can be can be quite fast, you know, rather than typing in a URL and filtering and trying to get to information, purely by looking at something you can go and fetch relevant information. Um, and that information that you get doesn't have to be just, you know, a website link. You can overlay it with digital and create an experience out of it. You can go and fetch a video. Um, you could take them to a recipe on how to cook that steak. So I want to show you a video of some experiences that uh, we kindly produced with uh, Meat and Livestock Australia. So thank you, Sean. Uh, and Kelly also features in this one as well. Um, also IGA were, were troopers, really nice people. Um, so you can see here the shopper can walk into that environment and they can be a little bit confused, like, you know, maybe what am I going to make tonight, what am I going to buy? But what you can do is point towards that poster and bring it to life. So in this regard, we've created a demo with Shane, who's one of my colleagues. And by pointing to the poster, we can make a hologram, well, kind of like a hologram appear. It's a green screen experience. And, and then that, that person talking is giving some context about you know, how to cook the perfect roast and taking you to that link or the information on how to do that. Um, another style of experience they can produce is you know, that take home or that in home experience. So the idea here is that you know, I've got this steak pack in front of me and I'm undecided or I want to go and find some recipes on that or I want to just learn about how to cook that steak. So what we can do is activate you know, an experience that can explain to you, you know, how would you cook that perfect steak and take you to a video you know, that demonstrates that. Um, so you can see here how to cook the perfect steak. So you can just tap on that button or you know, tap on the recipes and take you to some recipe ideas. Just to focus on, on those two activations that we can do. So the in-store sales tool. Um, so posters around, um, you could have a display, a point of sale display. You can activate and generate experiences from those. Uh, it doesn't have to be a green screen. You could have animated characters appear. You could have 3D things appear. You could have particle effects, a bit of magic. Uh, or it could be as simple as recognize, take me straight to that web link. Or once you get the take-home experience, you know, you can create activations where you're pretty much replicating the same thing, but you can take people to those videos, recipes, whatever. So why use AR? Um, I think the big benefit of augmented reality is that it does create um, this digital blend with the real world. So it can, it can add context to something that you're looking at. Um, the other advantage, uh, especially with regards to Hyundai, is you can, can, you can communicate complex things you know, much more easily. Um, and also at a one-to-one -one scale as well. So the benefits with regards to the experiences that we produced are that you can go and fetch those recipes, you can go to videos pretty quickly, get more information, you can actually link and create activations that you know, are linked to competitions, you can socially share those experiences as well. So there was a, a nice study that was done a couple of years ago uh, by a, um, an interactive experiential uh, digital marketing agency. Um, if you care to read more about this, that's what the cover looks like. It's a PDF that you can get online. And, um, and what they did was they surveyed um, over 1,000 shoppers around the United States 
um, on you know, the benefits of augmented reality. So you can see here that there's a good spread across uh, all of the United States. So what were their findings? Um, so you can actually see that 61% of shoppers actually preferred uh, retailers that had an augmented reality experience over those that didn't. Uh, so obviously there's a benefit there. Um, and then 68% of shoppers spent more time with the products um, if there was an augmented reality experience as opposed to those that didn't. So they're spending more time and they're engaging longer with your brand, you know, which is a big plus. Um, but probably the, the, the largest stats here are that 72% you know, of shoppers actually bought the item that they didn't expect to buy. You know, they weren't going to buy something, but you know, they were persuaded just purely from the information or the experience that they saw on the packaging. So uh, I quite like this other page that was in that, that, um, uh, this survey that uh, not only are people going to buy the product because of this augmented reality experience, but 40% of them would actually be willing to pay more than I guess the traditional price that was there as well. So some very large benefits towards using augmented reality. Um, and uh, at the core of all this is, you know, especially the benefits to that retailer is that they can understand you know, that shopper's behavior. They can understand, for instance, how long they were in that experience, what choices they made during that experience, whether they clicked and interacted with various things. Um, and they can also filter down to, you know, that, that region where that shopper was. So, you know, in this suburb, these products are more preferred over these other areas. Um, you know, uh, if with the user's permission, you could also filter down to that specific user. Typically, that doesn't happen, though. Um, but, yeah, so it's, it's really about that awareness. But the, the other thing, too, is that those retailers can then make choices based on that shopper's behaviour, and they can tailor the experiences and update them or change them or even change their packaging as a consequence to augmented reality. Um, so that's actually really good timing. That's me. So if you want to get in touch, uh, those are my details. Thanks very much.